Here is a clip of one of many reports her and Josh Owens have filed outside St. Louis at the big Manhattan Project site. Now, I told him, I said, I don't want you going to this unless you really volunteer. It's not my idea. It was Leanne's, but she's a tough cookie. She went out there, and it's been burning for two years, but now it's getting into the radioactive area. The good news is, is it was only about double what the normal background radiation is, and that could happen on a sunny day with the Geiger counters. Jakari found fish that had 10 times the normal, 14 times the normal in San Francisco. The media didn't believe it, sent reporters out there, this is two years ago, and they said, yeah, we found that. The Army went and confirmed Jakari's readings. We never claimed to be professional you know, radiologists. We had professional Geiger counters and a field meter, and we just, you know, that were calibrated, and we showed the numbers. And then the Army went out and confirmed it, and it caused a debate. So here's a clip of one of her reports when she was right outside the fire zone within 100 yards yesterday. Here it is. I just got a phone call from Don Chapman. She's the founder of Just Moms STL as well as St. Louis Radwaste Legacy.com. She called to let us know that right now the landfill is experiencing a leachate leak. It's huge. Don, what's going on? There's 10 to 11,000 gallons of leachate leaking right now back in the field down there. Leachate is very toxic. It's from the landfill. It's created from the burning Superfund materials and garbage that are occurring right next to you. It's, it, we understand that a force main broke and the leachate 10, again, 10 to 11,000 gallons of it leaked. That's what you're smelling right now. You're smelling the actual uh, right. odors and emissions from that leachate. Right, and we're not going to be able to stay here too long because I'm literally feeling burning sensation in my chest. So this leachate, uh, you call it, d uh, d what it like dump juice, basically. Uh, but this is the radioactive material that's here in this landfill now. Leak 10,000 gallons. Leak and by the way, I, I mean, the crew, you know, went out there. I, I think they need respirators, not just masks. See the locals on with paper masks. I guess that might help a little bit. But the issue here is these things are all over the country. We're spending a few minutes with Leanne. She's followed a bunch of reports, and we're going back to Max Kaiser of MaxKaiser.com. But this, for me, is indicative of the establishment not caring. Look at Fukushima. Look at all these other examples. Leanne, your Skype was breaking up too bad earlier. Thank you for spending so much time out there. I've kind of told you I want you to get out of the area, but you're still back there on top of the radioactive hill of waste that's starting to leak. Leanne McAdoo. Well, we actually, uh, Alex, that's right. We are back here at the West Lake landfill. I know, I know you told us to fall back, but we, we wanted to come get some Geiger counter readings of our own, just for our own personal peace of mind. Uh, happy to report that on this side of the perimeter, everything is fine. We're getting them in the high 40s. Um, of course, we'll probably be fine. The issue is for the families that have to be here every single day encountering that toxic material. Uh, now, as you can see behind me, uh, this is the leachate. This is where the leachate is uh, stored, and it's leaked more than 10,000 gallons yesterday. Uh, what what happens with leachate, it's kind of a water that's pumped through the landfill, um, and it's it, it absorbs some of the undesirable particulates in the landfill, which Ugh. a lot of people complain about it because, you know, it'll cause pollution, things like that. The issue here is that this particular landfill, there is radioactive material. So this is what the families are concerned about is how are you allowing this to, you know, leak into the air and things like that if, if we know that there is now a radioactive material here on this site. Well, and, Leanne, also, and I talked to you privately earlier. You were pretty emotional after like talking to people with their very. deformed children. Uh, the, the, there's neighborhoods around this. Uh, to, to report that to folks. You know, it has been a very emotional here. We've got some reports that are going to be coming up later uh, where we actually got to sit down with some of these families. And there is a huge cancer cluster in the area. It's not from this particular landfill, uh, but it's from the same Manhattan Project waste that has been dumped all around this city in many different areas. And so uh, we're sp we've spoken with people who were actually involved there at Mallinckrodt Chemical Works. Uh, their parents died. Their um, their children have died. And then also we are spoken, uh, spe speaking with people who uh, were playing around in the creek in the 80s when a lot of the material in the soil, the sediment was being moved and shuffled around when they were trying to create new subdivisions. Little did they know that there was 240,000 industrial waste barrels buried underneath that ground where the waste was from the Manhattan Project. And so they were just putting, pushing the sediment around, 
These families, they're planting gardens in their yard, thinking they're doing good, feeding their children fresh fruit and vegetables. And now there is a huge cancer cluster in the area. Uh, this area alone has 300,000 people and 45 cases of appendix cancer, which just to put that in perspective, you should see maybe one in 100,000. Here, it's just, it's outrageous. All sorts of cancers, like I said, birth defects, um, autoimmune disease. Sure. And so we need to take this seriously because these Manhattan Project sites are all over the nation. Well, exactly. And again, you've got 90 plus percent of the 440 something reactors worldwide leaking. I'm going to ask Max Kaiser about this in a moment. I know he's been passionate on it. We've got all these other uh, research reactors at universities that are leaking. And now they just cover it up when it leaks. The EPA, as you know, you reported yesterday, is just saying, oh, we're not worried about it. It's no big deal. And uh, just what is the attitude of the establishment to dump this type of garbage? You filed five reports. I know you've got some other interviews you're going to do, and then you're going to come on back, Leanne, because we don't want you to, uh, you and Josh, to suffer the same fate as those locals. I think the bottom line is people should research where they live. Right. And try to not live close to these toxic landfills, even if the government says it's nutritious. Absolutely. And that's what the families are fighting for is just to keep better track of this so people can know if they're moving into these communities. They didn't even know that there was um, the Manhattan Project was being worked on in St. Louis until a few years ago. These families, they wouldn't have bought their homes here if they knew that they were building uh, going to build right next to radiological waste. No, they, the community was not told. If they had lead paint in their homes, they would have to be told, but they weren't even, they had no idea. And so it's just very frightening. And like I said, you know, this is all across the country. And a lot of people don't understand why they're coming up with these rare cancers, why they're 30 years old, 35 years old, dying from cancer. Or why their children are born with brain tumors, you know, that you see in 70 year old men. So it's, it's a pretty big deal. And they're just trying to get the government and the state government to do something about it. Because this is going to happen to this next generation of people with this waste right now. That's right, Leanne. And be sure, I know you already set, have this set up. Uh, don't let us bug you with these live broadcasts because we can air all this later in the week and next week. Get those interviews with those parents. I mean, Fukushima happened four plus years ago. They said we were conspiracy theorists to say that it would hurt children. Now they admit the rates of cancer, thyroid cancer in children are some of the highest in the world within 100 miles of Fukushima. Uh, right. So this attitude of just calling people conspiracy theorists uh, is such a serious crime by these elites. And it really frightens me to think who's running things. Leanne McAdoo and Josh Owens, great job. When are you planning to come back to Austin? We'll be flying back Thursday night, so we'll we'll see you there Friday. I'll be doing the InfoWars Nightly News. All right, well, let's have you and Josh in studio on Friday. Leanne, thank you so much. Thank you.